The weather is going to be significantly different depending upon what part of the state of Florida you are watching from. What's going on, guys? I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. In this video, we are going to talk about why, and there's the hint right there. It's a cause of a cold front. Northern part of the state on the drier side, central and southern Florida on the wetter side. We're going to break all that down and take you from north to central to south Florida in terms of your pinpoint forecast. Tropics are active, but Florida is looking okay. There is an area highlighted, though, off the Florida coast. We're going to talk all about that coming up towards the end of the video in our tropical update, so stick around for that. If you do want to stay updated on all things Florida weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Of course, we venture through the rest of hurricane season. If you find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. If you do want to feel cooler, we do have a little bit of less humid air coming into Florida, by the way, but... If you want to know what is in store for Florida, and it could be a cold and stormy winter, I just did a full update on that. You can click the link that just popped up there if you want to take a look at that video. I'll also put it in the description and comments. All right. First from a Central Florida perspective, and then we're going to broaden this out a little bit. There's 4 o'clock on your Monday evening. A few thunderstorms, mainly around Orlando and then south. That's exactly where we have our front that's kind of stalled and kind of draped right on through here that is going to help to keep storm chances a little more elevated the further south in central florida you are and that's a give or take we could be dealing with some storms in sanford bushnell edgewater even though the high resolution future radar did not show that there we still have that opportunity once we go forward in through the rest of your afternoon and into tomorrow same kind of deal if we are going to have a couple of showers early to start today and you saw that there it's going to be south of orlando but the same kind of thing happens as we move into the evening. You don't see much activity here. It is mainly pushed down into South Florida toward Lake Okeechobee. And I will show you that in the full Florida view in just one second. Sanford, we're at 87 tomorrow. 90 degrees in the villages, 86 in Melbourne. You see it's a little bit cooler. You see those yellows popping up, especially in Osceola County, closer to Deer Park, closer to Holopaw, Yeehaw Junction, because we're going to have that higher opportunity again for a few of those thunderstorms around, especially on the early side of the day. Here is the front. This is as of Monday afternoon, September 18th, and you see the dew point temperatures. This is one of the ways you characterize a cold front. Again, cold is just relative. It's the leading edge of a, relatively speaking, colder air mass and drier air mass as well. Dew point temperature is nice and comfy. Again, 60 is that dividing line where you start to feel a little humid. 70, forget about it. That's when you start to get into your tropical stuff once you close in on 80. That's like, I don't want to go outside, period, because it's so uncomfortable. That's that real rich tropical stuff that we sometimes feel in Florida. And certainly feeling it now in parts of Central and South Florida, much more comfy from Oklahoma City to Charlotte. Even in Pensacola and Jacksonville, it is feeling nice on your Monday morning, on your Monday afternoon. And we'll continue to do that way. It will still be warm but it's not going to be as humid. So this isn't a cold front in the sense of like it's the winter time or anything like that, but it is going to bring that much less humid air. And you can kind of see where the front is just based on the high resolution clouds and rain forecast here. You see the rain kind of draped across areas south of Orlando and then the clouds where it's kind of dry up here and then stormy south of that dividing line that again that line that divides the relatively cooler air with the relatively warmer air so there you go saturday or tuesday i should say i'm jumping ahead of the weekend already there's six o'clock on your saturday and you see where all the storms are again the front is basically right there kind of draped from south central florida right around the lake okeechobee area and it's kind of stalled out so at this point it's really no longer a cold front it's more of that stationary front that's just kind of chilling there south of orlando but it is helping to energize all these storms here and give us that higher storm chance so you'll see once we get into the south florida forecast our storm chances for Tuesday are much higher than elsewhere across the state of Florida. So that is 2 o'clock in your afternoon. Some rocking storms south of Orlando, closer to Fort Myers, Lake Okeechobee, Miami. Even the Keys getting in on this. And then eventually fizzling out as we lose some of the heating of the day. We clearly see here where we have the clouds. That is exactly the front. Look at us in Pensacola, Port St. Joe, Apalachicola, through Jacksonville, St. Augustine. Sunny. and Really nothing but sunshine as we keep that drier air pushing through and filtering it a little bit more for us for North Florida. South Florida, our day will come. We have to wait a few more months, really, for Central Florida as well. All right, big old goose egg in the rainfall department across North Florida. Temperatures back to the upper 80s. The humidity nice and low. It's going to feel really comfortable. Even in Gainesville, it's a dry heat. We're still touching 90 degrees 
Rain chance is super low, pretty much non-existent. And again, the humidity, I don't want to say wipe clean, but it's going to be much, much more comfortable for us. We're still dealing with a little humidity in central Florida, but the further north you are, the more comfortable it is going to get. So rain chances, pretty much zero in Ocala through Inverness, Daytona Beach, they're super, super low. We're closer to the front though, so there is that slight opportunity for a few of these to kind of push back to the northwest so that Orlando, our rain chance is at 30% at the Cape, or 20% in Vero Beach, we're closer to the front. So a 40% shot for storms, and you also see the icons up here. Extra cloud cover, the further you get, the closer you get to that oomph, that forcing mechanism of that cold front to get that air to rise, cool, condense, get the clouds, and then in some cases where it's strong enough to get those storms going, and especially we have the heating of the day. Here's the deal, and this is where I said at the beginning of the video that it is so much different between North Florida and South Florida, as it sometimes is, but this is kind of dramatic in terms of the rain chances. See, Belle Glade, we're talking about a 70% shot for storm. Same for us in Okeechobee, just about. Miami, our rain chances are elevated as well. Same for Fort Myers into Naples, Sarasota, and Bradenton. We will have those elevated rain chances as well. If you have spending time in the Keys, most of those storms should be north of you. But there's still an opportunity for some of those to find you in the Keys. All right, on to the tropics. And things... Are a little weird. We got rid of Lee. We got rid of Margo over the weekend, if you've been keeping up with the tropics. But now we have Hurricane Nigel hanging out right smack dab in the center of your screen, right in the center of, of the Atlantic. This storm is going to rapidly intensify and then get on out of here. This is not going to impact anybody. Here is Bermuda. So that is going to go just like that. It's going to get on up and out. So we are not going to spend hardly any time on Nigel. I'll keep throwing updates your way again, just because it's out there. You may hear about it. So we're going to keep on talking about it. But again, Nigel, not doing anything. This little guy right here, we're going to talk first. And there is really nothing in that circle of, or that blob of yellow just yet. This is over the next few days where that cold front that is going to help to give us that drier air towards the panhandle of North Florida, as that sags down and stalls there, this is often a trigger mechanism as well for the tropics. So what we're expecting is, is the potential anyway, for a non-tropical area of low pressure to develop in between Florida and the Bahamas and then kind of drift up this way. So while the front is going to enhance rain chances for South Central Florida and then South Florida, it's not going to be because of this entity. So I want to be clear about that. If we do get something to develop off the Atlantic coast of Florida, whether it's subtropical, meaning it's that hybrid split, part tropical, part non-tropical, or fully tropical, this is going to move away likely towards the Carolinas, maybe up into the Northeast, and should stay pretty weak because there's going to be so much land interaction. There's not going to be a lot of time for it to get its act together, which is obviously great news. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we also are going to be watching this guy. And in the long run, that might be more of a concern. Again, there's nothing immediate. There's no immediate threats to Florida. Um, but I will get into that in just one second. First, I want to show you uh, how this little subtropical ugly looking thing could get going as we move into the weekend this is friday morning and our front is basically right here here is this little entity it's super weak i mean the rain is heavy it's tropical moisture but you see it kind of lifting north riding the carolina coastline you see that little twirl towards the end of that little spin as it kind of works towards maybe dc maybe to the delmarva i want to point out the other thing too where there likely would stay land interaction is because this big chunk of high pressure that has worked its way off of Canada, a kind of post Lee, is going to stay there and it's going to lock anything that would develop and keep it tightly packed to the coast. So that is something that we're going to be watching closely there uh, as well in the short term. I do want to show you the latest long range model when it comes to that little thing. There's big differences in between the Euro and the GFS, as you might imagine. There typically always is, but there's been a lot of differences this year. So we're going to look at this and then we're going to break down some of the ensemble forecast before I let you go. Here it is right here, kind of rolling off of Africa. It's right down at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Let me play this out so that I can bring my Telestrator back up. It's right here. That's going to be the high, next likelihood of our next name storm of the season. The environment looks good. There's a high shot. You saw that red blob drawn by the Hurricane Center. The good news is the European wants to get this thing strong quick and then take it up and out. 
we kind of have a piece of the Bermuda high right here. Kind of see that clockwise motion, and we have another piece here. The Euro is suggesting that we get this storm strong enough to split the difference, find the weakness of this little high that's right there, and then go up and out. That would be awesome. The GFS, however, wants to keep it weaker for longer, which would tend to have this storm miss the weakness and then be driven further to the west by the secondary area of high pressure. This is something that's way out into the future and yet to really be defined. September 28th, we could be looking at something close to the Caribbean right in here. That is 10 days from now, okay? So just want to be clear about that, but it's out there again. We're going to talk about it in a scientific, meteorological, transparent way on this channel because we just want everybody to know, again, what is out there because there's a lot of uh, scare tactics. There's a lot of that fear junk out there on social media. So again, we're going to talk about it. It's obviously on our radar. It's something out there. It's the peak of hurricane season. So here are the European ensembles. If you've been hanging out with us uh, for quite some time, you know I love ensembles. It's the best way to forecast something like this in advance. There's different conditions thrown into these, and that's how we can see our, a wider range of outcomes rather than just one model that's likely going to either get it strong, get it weak, and then move it this way, move it that way. All of that is right here. So we can clearly see here, look at the pink and orange or pink and purple, if I can get my colors right. All of this is Nigel. Okay, so those are all tightly packed. There is Bermuda. That is the ensemble members for Nigel. Up and out. Gone. No question. If the storm gets strong, and the pink and purple here, look at the wind chart up here. That is a much stronger storm, okay? So the ensemble's also telling that same story. If we can get this storm strong quick, we would like that because it'll find the weakness between this ridge out here and then the appendage of it right over here, and it goes up and out, gone. Nothing to worry about. If it stays weaker, then we might be talking about land interaction, or at least close to land interaction, in the next 10 days. You see where there's the blue lines, the yellow lines, the orange lines. That is a lower wind speed. It's a weaker storm. So there's that fork in the road again. Does it get strong and find a way out? Or does it stay weak and head closer towards the Caribbean islands and stay low? There's a lot left to iron out, of course. There's 10 days. We're going to watch it. It hasn't even rolled off of Africa yet. But again, it's being talked about. It's being shared. And uh, I want to make sure you guys are getting good information. We're having that conversation here. So if you have any questions, post that in the comments. We would love that. Again, I'll do my best to answer everything as well if you, if you do. But again, in the short term, there is absolutely nothing coming in our direction at all. Uh, that little blob off our coast is nothing for us to be concerned about that would lift towards the Carolinas and away from Florida after it potentially develops off of being uh, firing off of that cold front that's stalled across Florida. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you had a great weekend. Again, if you want to hear my thoughts on the upcoming winter in Florida, which could be really, really different than what we're accustomed to, maybe a lot of severe weather, a lot of cold, a lot of storms, click the link in the description, and I'll catch you next time.